Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast, brought to you by BigFourAccountingFirms.com. Now, in today's episode, I wanted to discuss more about PwC and the news of working from home. Last week, they broke the news that people could choose to either work from home or go into the office, and this is for their U.S. group. And they have 55,000 people in the U.S., but it only applies to the client-facing individuals. If you're in IT or HR or I don't even know, like it's just internal firm services would have to be the ones that come into the office. But I'm not sure how that works because there's articles that say that even they have to go into the office so or that, that they have been working virtually for some time. So be interesting to see how it works out and how the how people choose uh, where to work, whether they choose to work at home or in the office. And they have two weeks to do that. And some of the press releases, because they released a generic statement and everybody seems to be putting that out, but some of them vary. I saw one on CNN that says that PwC is doing this for diversity reasons as well. I think PwC is the most forward in trying to be more DEI, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this is because Tim Ryan, I think, feels guilty about being a white man in power. So he he just went crazy on this stuff. And PwC is pushing the farthest. But I think PwC also put themselves in a space where they have so many goals in this area that they know they can't meet them. And then I think that maybe this diversity, that maybe this working from home can increase that. I think that's part of it. Um, but I think also part of it is risk. I, I think during COVID-19 with the pandemic, I think a lot of businesses just want to reduce risk related to potentially spreading COVID-19 and facing regulatory fines from you know, local governments, if something happens, they don't want to be sued by their workers if they're forced to come to the office and they get COVID-19. I think it has to do a lot with that as well. And then reducing office space. PwC has been all about reducing office space. And we covered that a while ago during COVID-19 where they were looking to get rid of some of their office space in New York. And some people think it's because they can force you to work longer hours because you're constantly at home and people can ping you whenever. But I don't think that's the case because in the big four accounting firms, the big four accounting firms have been doing that for forever. So them saying that now that you work from home, you have to work more is to me, it just doesn't make sense because uh, people could reach you all the time. Once, once smartphones started being implemented in the big four accounting firms, you were just, reachable at any moment and you had to work around the clock and nobody cared where you were as long as you got your work done. But I mean, working from home doesn't change that to me. I think PwC is just trying to be flexible. They're trying to attack, attract talent, which I think made sense to me. But then the part about the diversity is also clicked in my head because I know PwC is the most, you know, has the most ambitious goals in this area. And most people are talking about working from home. But a lot something that people missed is that Tim Ryan, the CEO, the US CEO, released something called their purpose report on the same basically the same day where the working from home news came out. And I thought this was their I thought this was their revenue report, their financial release from for the year because they're they're behind. It should they should have released their financial report by now. And they still have not released it. I thought this was it because it was this humongous report that you can find on their website. And I'll link to it in the show notes. But they did not release their financial report. They released this purpose report. And I can tell this was Tim Ryan tweeted this out. He hasn't tweeted in a while. So this is obviously his report. But And it reports on a whole bunch of you know diverse, different diversity, equity, and inclusion standards. And there's 18 indicators. And what they mean by indicators is metrics and they're measuring, um, you know, just diversity across 
partners, veterans, LGBTQ+, plus, interns, start interns, partner, like all these things that nobody cares about unless you work at PwC, but they're releasing this out in the open. And, I, and this makes sense because the big four have been doing this in, in Europe and Australia and other places and more progressive places in the U.S. And so the U.S. is trying to catch up to that. Uh, I'm not sure really who's looking at this report other than PwC and maybe, you know, some governmental institutions that require this. But you can look at the executive summary and it summarizes it to some extent. And it says what they're trying to do, their goals. Or maybe not even, it doesn't even have their goals in that one, but it, it says some things that they're trying to do. Like if you're transgender, they're increasing the amount of maximum benefit you can up to 75,000, increasing a firm's charitable contributions it's like all the extracurricular stuff outside of work that they're doing and how they want to achieve more diversity by increase 50% increase in black and Latinx workforce. They've put that in other press releases before and we've talking about spoken about that here. And same thing with female potential partners. The pipeline, they're not even going to they don't even want to say they're going to be able to increase female partners by 50%. They're saying they want to increase the potential pipeline. And then the details of that are in this humongous purpose report. And I think the purpose report is they spend a lot of time doing this. And I think they wanted to release it with their financial release, but they didn't do it in time. Or, you know, since they're still working on the financial part, I guess. But the one thing that this report, which is supposed to detail diversity at PBC, uh, is really confusing because the numbers don't tie out. You know, being an accountant, I wanted to tie some of this out, but there's, of course, there's a lot of people who you, you have, it's voluntary to report. It's, they basically use those things when you're onboarded or when they take a survey to get answers for people to self-identify. And a lot of it is people that selected, elected not to provide the information and, but also just in total, there's some people that didn't even respond to the survey. You could tell because the numbers don't match and the numbers are really low across the board. But even on top of that, the, the numbers don't really show progress over the years. They don't show an increase in diversity in any level of the firm. There's slight, but it's just, it moves back and forth. And even in the firm's leadership, there's not that much movement. And there's, what was really shocking to me is there's members of the leadership team, the U.S. leadership team, a number of them that decided not to respond in the past couple of years. So I think PwC is facing, well, I think there's a lot of people that don't want to respond to this. And one of the craziest statistics was the the people that were heterosexual. It's like PwC's heterosexual employees were 50% of the population. And I was like, wow, that's really diverse if, if everybody else is non-heterosexual. But then you look at the chart and it's over the years, it's around 50, 50 to 60% are straight or heterosexual. And the chart actually shows it increasing straight or heterosexual, which I think would be against what PDBC wants. But either way, there, it, it doesn't, this one chart doesn't add up. It shows straight heterosexual, 58%, LGBTQ, 2%, 2% prefer not to share. And then all the other information, we don't know where that goes. And so I'm guessing in addition to prefer not to share, there's a, there should be another category called did not even respond the survey. So I think it makes it, makes it a little bit hard to trust this report, this purpose report, even though PwC has their trust services. So I'm not really sure the audience for this. I think it has good information in it still as far as the number of employees at PwC in the U.S. Uh, by rank, um, PwC's goals. And it's going to be, I think it's going to be part of PwC's future performance is is you're going to have to self-identify and the more more self-identify 
metrics you have and they call it intersectionality and that's a lot of this DEI stuff is intersectionality the more intersectional you 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 are as an employee of PwC I think the better it is going to be for you so I think that's just something to consider it's good to look at this report I'll link to it but it's something that PwC released at the same time they're releasing this other news about working from home so keep an eye on that um, we'll probably be looking more into this report to release the numbers from it because the numbers are very useful but just need to consolidate them and then pwc's financial report should be coming out any day now i'm not sure what's taking them so long they usually really, they have usually released it by now but that's the podcast for today make sure to subscribe to this podcast to get future updates and check out the show notes thanks for listening